Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to have you here. Back to our usual nine o'clock time for morning prayer on this Friday morning. I hope you had a good day yesterday, that there was at least one thing in it that you enjoyed, whether it was a conversation with someone, a meeting, a chance encounter on a daily walk. Pray that today would be a good day. We pray as ever using the daily prayer app to guide us in our readings and as we pray for the world. So let's pray together this morning. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 51. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgments. I have been wicked even from my birth, a sinner when my mum conceived me. Behold, you desire truth deep within me and shall make me understand wisdom in the depths of my heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the joy, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. If you desire no sacrifice, else I would give it. You take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. O be favourable and gracious to Zion. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will accept sacrifices offered in righteousness, the burnt offerings and oblations, then shall they offer up bulls on your altar. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Take away, good Lord, the sin that corrupts us. Give us the sorrow that heals and the joy that praises and restore by grace your own image within us that we may take our place among your people in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll come back to that. Sam, in a moment or two, but let's read from Luke first and then see together what might be the challenge or the inspiration in today's passages. So we're reading, uh, continuing in Luke 14, reading verses 12 to 24. Jesus also said to the one who had invited him, when you give a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go and see it. Please accept my apologies. 
Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I'm going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I've just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the servant returned and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to the servant, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, sir, what you ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Well, what might we want to take from both our psalm and that reading from Luke this morning? Psalm 51, one of these psalms that um, is one that we tend to read on Ash Wednesday within the liturgy, a psalm we read on days where we are remembering our sin, our brokenness. This psalm written by David in a time of deep sorrow for his sins. What do we do when we're aware of our brokenness? What do we turn to? You know, there's so often that temptation, isn't there? To, um, if we know we've mucked something up, maybe to go and hide from God, to make the space. But actually, that wasn't the approach that David takes in the psalm. That isn't the approach that God calls us to as his children. You know, when Adam and Eve muck it up in the garden, they go and hide what's God's words to them after the fall. Where are you? God comes seeking for us. Adam and Eve had hidden in their shame and their brokenness, in the horror of perhaps what they had done. Yet God is a God who comes to seek us out, who, who asks us to confess so that we might not feel bad about ourselves or more guilty, but instead that we might know his forgiveness, to live in his freedom. We spoke on Sunday past looking at Romans about how God frees us from our sins and yet so many of us Maybe due to temptation, you know, we try and give sin, give sin power over us again. The shame, the guilt, we're going to unpack that more this coming Sunday as we continue looking at Romans on Sunday mornings. What's the psalm though saying, God, would you wash me? Make me whiter than snow. Clean me. Take away the blot of my offences. David says, I know I've sinned, I know I've got it wrong before you, and so I come before you, Heavenly Father, make me clean. I want to hear once more the joy and gladness, the salvation, the new start you offer us. David's plea, Lord, don't cast me from your presence. Don't take yourself away from me. Instead, help me to come to you. Give me afresh the joy of your salvation. Sustain me with your spirit. Teach me how to live the way that you have called me to live. Deliver me from my guilt. We see that all the time, don't we? We come to God, we ask his forgiveness. God forgives us and we still carry the guilt around. How are we going to give that over to God as well that we might live free in true forgiveness, free now? That line in the psalm that we speak of every day when we do morning prayer using the prayer app. Open my lips, my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Would that be the first words on our lips in the morning? Lord, as you open our mouths, would you help us to be people that speak words of praise and gratitude? Lord, help us to come before you with the right spirit, the right attitude. One that asks for your forgiveness but then one who lives out the freedom that you have offered us, the death of your son that makes us free. Would we embrace that freedom in how we live this day? Free from the guilt and stain and blots of our sin, of our pasts. Free to proclaim the goodness and forgiveness that God extends to all who seek him. It's a powerful psalm. Then in this reading from Luke, here we have Jesus again doing, remember yesterday we picked up on some of this humility, don't take the best seat at the table. So now Jesus continues to give us advice on how to behave at dinner tables, who to invite, what does it look like? Again, Jesus asks us to explore our motives. Are we just like everybody else, doing a good thing for someone in the hope that we get 
a good thing back. Jesus challenges us to be people who go a step further. We see this throughout the Gospels. And here today, don't just do something in order that you might get something back. Instead, be people who extend hospitality, who go further than others in terms of how far you serve people. Look out for those who are overlooked, who don't get the invitations. Don't just invite your friends and your relatives and the rich and people that can give something back to you. Instead, when you host your banquets, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind. Those who cannot repay you. Those for whom you cannot invite you back. How can we be like the God we seek to follow, generous in spirit, generous in heart, generous in our actions? Then we've got this interesting parable from Jesus about this great banquet he wants to throw. The invitations go out and people, when it's time to come, start to offer rubbish excuses. I wonder what have been some of the excuses that we've used rather than attending worship or going to a prayer meeting or joining with our brothers and sisters. What are some of the things we value more at the time? I don't know, is there pressure around an assignment or schoolwork? Is there a work thing that just really needs to be done on Sunday morning so that you can then do something you want to do on a Sunday afternoon and church was more missable than what you wanted to do in your Sunday afternoon? What are some of the excuses that stop us engaging perhaps in prayer meetings or in church? Are we too busy for God? Do we let our fear of not knowing what we might say stop us? How can we get past that? How can we get past the excuses, the fears, the busyness? How do we make sure our priorities are aligned with the right things? Because notice what happens. Eventually the invitation stopped coming to the people who were invited. Other people took up the invitation. Where perhaps are we relying on our reputations or things from the past in order to still gain a seat at a table? Where do we need to be wary that our excuses, our lack of connecting in with things won't mean that we'll soon find ourselves no longer invited to things because others have stepped up, others have taken the opportunities, others have grown in their walk with Jesus in this time where perhaps we have fallen behind. Jesus invites all of us into relationship. Jesus invites all of us to his banquet, to his meal table, to an encounter with him. I remember a student pastor at university said to me uh, when we were talking about the prioritising of a devotional time in the morning or, Amy, if Jesus was physically sitting in your kitchen, you wouldn't leave him sitting there. <laughs> but there's so many other things that grab your attention. Picking up your Bible and praying falls further down the list. Amy, you need to see it. God wants to speak to you today. Why are you leaving him waiting in a side room and putting other things first? You need to realign your priorities. The King of Kings wants to speak into your life. What's his encouragement? What's his challenge for you today that you're missing out on because your priorities are not lined up in the right way? Those words have really stuck with me. If Jesus was sitting at your dinner table, you wouldn't leave him sitting. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, wants to speak to us today through his word. Why am I leaving him waiting and prioritising something that doesn't give life or hope or truth? The invitation is there. What stops us engaging? What do we value more than time with God, time with our brothers and sisters. There's been so many interesting conversations over these last three and a half months, four months of people kind of saying, I'll never take church for granted again. I know I've come with that attitude. Sometimes we just go through the motions of things. You know, we're desperate to meet again with one another. Hey, when we go back to normal, let us not become people who begin to take these things for granted that we have missed so much. Jesus's invitation is there. How will we respond to time with him today, this week, this month?
let's not miss out on the opportunity to spend time in the presence of the King of Kings and with our brothers and sisters again. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Let's pray for our world this morning. Who are the people that come to mind? What are the situations we want to bring before our Heavenly Father this morning? Let's pray. Lord God, we come into your presence this morning. Thank you for the actions of Jesus upon the cross that opened the way for us to come. Lord, thank you for that VIP access that's offered at the price of your son. Lord, help us not to take it for granted, this privilege it is to know you, to spend time with you. Lord, thank you that you wipe away our sins, you take away the blot of our transgressions, you take this, the guilt and the shame. Lord, help us to come to you, to confess to you, to know today the gift of your freedom, your new start. Lord, would you help us to live free in you? Give us, as David prayed, the joy of your salvation. Restore to us again the goodness of your love. Would we know your loving kindness this day? Would we be people who speak of your forgiveness, of your mercy, of your truth, of your love this day with those we encounter? Lord God, you offer to all of us an invitation to your table. The offer of friendship, of relationship, of increasing depth in our walk with you. Lord God, help us to align our priorities right. Would we put you first? Would the distractions of the world, with the pressures of the world, not take away your place on the throne of our hearts? Would we seek your kingdom first? Would we seek your presence above others? Lord, help us to check ourselves when we begin to make excuses, when our priorities get muddled up. Bring us back to you, Heavenly Father, we pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of this new day, for the opportunities that lie ahead. Lord God, you know how we feel this morning. You know what we're excited about. You know what we're dreading. Lord God, thank you that we can come to you as we are. There's no need for pretense with you. Lord, you know our hearts. Search us, O oh God. Lord, would we find in you today what we need to navigate this day? For the things that we are fearful of or worried about, would we know your peace this morning, Lord God? Would you help us to prepare for what we need to prepare for? Would you help us to align our priorities right? Would you help us to know who to reach out to today? Who can we check in on? Lord, we pray today for those who are finding it particularly tough. Maybe some of us are here watching prayer this morning. Lord, we lift before you this day those who are feeling lonely and frustrated. For those facing financial difficulties, for those facing mental health battles, for those for whom home is not a safe place. We remember the homeless, for those in temporary accommodation, for those separated from loved ones, for those who wonder what the future will, will hold, for our children and young people, for those looking after them at home. Lord, you know what we need this day. Your word says you provide for our needs. We pray for all those who will find this day tough. 
Or do you want to pray on for our food bank here in Canning Town and for other food banks and food initiatives all over the country that some of us may be involved in? Lord, we thank you here in Canning Town for the opportunity to work with other organisations and churches in order to meet this practical need of many in our community. Lord, we thank you for Nigel and Charmaine and for others who are involved in leading that work. Lord, would you show each of us how to play our part and how we can contribute? Can we volunteer? Can we donate either food or financially in order to meet these practical needs of those who you know and love in our community? Would we be your hands and feet, Jesus, helping those in need at this time? Lord God, we want to remember all who are sick this day. Perhaps where you are, you might want to name them aloud. Lord God, we lift before you Healer God, we pray that today would be a day of progress, of restoration, strengthen their bodies, we pray, whether at home or in hospital. Move in power, we pray, Healer God, Jehovah Rapha. Lord, we continue to pray for those in authority over us. We remember our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, his cabinet, for those in the opposition parties, for scientific and medical advisors, for our councillors, our MPs, our local mayor here in Newham. Lord, we continue to lift Archbishop Justin and our bishops before you as decisions continue to be made around the reopening of buildings for worship and what that might look like. Lord, we pray soon to have clarity and guidance about what that means so that we can begin to make decisions and plan going forward. Lord, give wisdom and clarity to all those in authority over us. Keep us faithful in prayer for those making these decisions, we pray. Lord, we pray on for all those today on the front lines. Lord, we remember our NHS workers, our carers, our GPs, those working in schools. Lord, we remember today um, Lord, giving thanks for Geoffrey and for Sharon and for those who have been involved working with the school to deliver food parcels to families in our community. As Geoffrey and I deliver those parcels today, would you give us the words to share, Lord, and where we can uh, perhaps speak out boldly about who you are, would you help us to find ways to bring you into the conversation in order that people would know that they are not just loved by the school and by the church, but also loved by you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for transport workers, for shop workers, delivery drivers, social workers, funeral directors, chaplains. Pray for all those returning to work. We're so aware, Lord, here in Canning Town, as the construction projects begin again, we hear the noises, we see the daily progress as the buildings get taller. Lord, we pray for all those back at work. We pray for all those who will one day move in to these new homes as our community grows hugely in population numbers. Lord, help us as a church know how to respond, how to reach out into every part of our community and every part of our parish, that we would be good news, that we would build bridges with our community, that we would see many not only move into the area but come to know you and be part of our church family here at St Luke's. Lord, help us to know how to plan. Help us to know how to follow what it is you are leading us to do as a church here in this rapidly growing parish. Lord, we want to pray today for all those who mourn, for those who have lost loved ones at this time. Perhaps again, you want to name them, them aloud. Lord, we lift these people before you, friends, neighbours, colleagues, family members. Draw close to all those who mourn. Draw close to the brokenhearted. Be with those today who will bury loved ones. Those who wish they could attend funerals but can't due to current restrictions. Be with those leading those services, we pray. Even in the midst of sorrow, would the hope of the resurrection be known, Lord Jesus? Lord God, we offer you today ourselves. Speak into our days. 
guide us, lead us as we seek to serve you in serving others? Would we be people who carry your hope, your love, your truth into the world around us, we pray? Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, it's been great to um, do morning prayer as ever together this morning. I do pray that it's a good day for you, that you know God's presence with you, that you are people who carry God's truth and light into the world. The, my t-shirt this morning says, Yahweh, we carry with us God's presence. His name is written on our hearts. Would our hands and our feet be able to take with us the good news of the God who is love, who is for us, who is forgiveness. Now, we don't um, do morning prayer like this together on Saturdays, but we will be back live streaming from St. Luke's here in the Vicarage on Sunday morning, 10.30. Uh, everyone is welcome to join in with that. Hopefully, in the next couple of days, we'll be able to share a little bit more. I know a number of you have uh, been in touch given Boris's announcement about the reopening of church buildings. We're still waiting on clarity about what that means. And so at least for the next couple of weeks, we'll um, continue to live stream as we're doing. I think we'll continue live streaming for quite a while, but there might be opportunities to do something differently coming up. But we're waiting on guidance from the government, which will then be looked at by the bishops, which will then be passed down. So I know lots of people were excited by that announcement. We long for the day where we can gather together again for worship, but we need to be patient. Patient, we need to wait for the advice and then we need to start thinking about what it means. As ever at St Luke's, it will be slightly complicated for us given our shared building with the school, the school which is still very busy most of the time because of um, the kids that are still in school, they're coming back of the different year groups. So watch the space uh, this Sunday, Next Sunday, we'll definitely still be doing church the way that we've been doing it. Although as soon as I have more information and I've chatted it through with our church wardens, Liz and Manny, I will have more to share. So we won't be here for morning prayer tomorrow, but we will be here 10.30 Sunday morning to live stream our service together. Here, why not take a challenge on board? Who can you be inviting to join in with a live stream service on Sunday? I don't think it's ever been easier to invite people to church. They don't even need to get dressed. They can watch from the safety behind a screen. But who might you invite to church this weekend that they might hear something of the good news of Jesus, the reason for our hope, even in the midst of the times we find ourselves in. Friends, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning for our service or next Monday for our morning prayer together at nine o'clock. Have a good day and see you again soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye now.